So, here we go. So there's a little bit of pre-recorded content. I'm hoping to get released before the patch on the 7th of August, which changes the game from an engineering point of view and releases the Type 8. And it's a final nod, I guess, to the Python Mark II before it becomes publicly available to buy for good old-fashioned space money in the game. I debated long and hard about the Python Mark II, and my decision was really made for me based on uh, my friend Andy K, who got one, because he had the arcs. If you look at my arcs total, and you look at the price of the uh, Python Mark II Stellar, I just don't quite have enough, so I'm holding on to them. I'm not sure if I'm holding on to them to the Type 8. Uh, <laughs> it depends, um... And I've obviously got a little bit less arts than Cosmic Drifter, but so I've got a choice. I can I can choose what I want to do with it. So anyway, I'm going to talk about what Lone Wolf Pack did with his Python Mark II Stellar, because it was slightly a little bit of um, shall we say out of the box thinking. Is out of the box thinking a fair <laughs> Is that a fair uh, description, Andy, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's the here's the ship. Here is the ship in all its glory in the buy screen for the pre built ships, which you can get anywhere. Now it's coming with this red paint job and I believe that was changed. It's got this uh, nice little uh, Spoiler at the back, obviously that's for your wind, that's a couple of nice little modifications to the to the wing tips. Uh, kit stuff anyway, but it's a nice ship. I can't scroll under it unfortunately. Uh, doesn't let me do it here. And obviously the thing we noticed about it when it came out at first was the, the, the tail fins of the engines are not the usual spreads you see on most ships, they're completely straight, so it boded, it boded well for this thing going going flying good, so and it looks streamlined, which is pretty weird for space, but so we'll not call it streamlined now, or, or aerodynamic, what we'll call it is um, frame shift dynamic, is that how do we get, we need to find something that's going to catch on, right, that's the word we're looking for, <laughs> Faster than light dynamic. Anyway, it looks nice. It's a nice looking ship. And out of the box, when you spend the arcs, or you buy this build, it comes with a lot of combat related goodies. Multi cannons, pulse lasers. Pretty good fighting stuff. Um, why they supplied a fighting ship with lightweight alloys? Well, that surprises me, but they did. So I would imagine there's a few of them had the, if it's available to adjust, because I don't know, because I don't have, don't have one. I've got military or something better on there. Mm -hmm. Got a 6A power plant and thrusters and a mm -hmm. 5A frame shift drive with super cruise. Overcharge, a 4D life support, and 6A power distributors. It's basically a combat build. And you see that when you get down to the utilities. It's got a heat sink and it's shield boosted to the max. Although there's probably some of the engineering mathematical, you know, uh, spreadsheet types looking at that and thinking they should have A's and E's and different engineering and anyway so I'm pretty sure that they've been changed with some of the PvP players and then we get to the stock optional internals and again it's built for survivability 6C by weaves would be pretty strong 
and the hull reinforcements and the void module reinforcements, it can take a beat in this ship and it can fix itself. A repair limpet. Yeah. I don't know if it's a build any game, anybody who kind of specialises in ship building in the game would have made. But it's the one that Frontier developers come out way out of the box, so. How many people changed it when they bought it? I have no idea. But Andy did. Andy did. Um, and he changed it. In a probably an unexpected, ex unexpected way to anybody who didn't know what he was planning to do. Because he turned it into a an exploration ship. So, the first thing he did, the easy options are hard points. He took them all out. <laughs> he took them all out. And I don't think, and he'll need to confirm this, but I don't think he could store them. I don't know if they were stored. I don't know if they were sold. Um, I don't know if it's the space to store stuff, but basically they were gone. They were empty slots to reduce mass, like any good explorer does. Um, the core internals, uh, he left the lightweight alloys and he engineered them with a heavy duty grade 5 angled plating. That's what he tells me. So, I don't know why that is. Extra kinetic resistance. Extra kinetic resistance when you're hitting the ground at 200 kph. So it's bounce protection. Okay. It's bounce protection. Okay. That's good. It's, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So, so he's got that. I don't think many people would have done that. Most people would have went lightweight or something, but or heavy duty with something else. But that's good. Um, and here we get to the territory people are going to go, what the hell is this guy doing? And this is why I'm talking about it, because it's fascinating. So he took the 6A power plant off, and he fitted a 3A. Now, he had to engineer this one first, I believe, because right. yeah. it, it wouldn't work. <laughs> it wouldn't work until it was engineered. So. In fact, it was actually the pre-engineered one that you and I got doing that CG back in the bubble. Oh, okay, okay. I had it shipped over from, um, I had the you three of them. got it sent over. through the bubble, okay. Yeah. And that one's engineered with, it's overcharged to grade five, so it obviously needs the power. And it's got thermal spread. More on that later. But that's something I would have expected. That's engineering I would have totally expected. <laughs> So the next piece is the thrusters. They came with a 6A and the 6A remained. And he engineered them with clean grade 5 and thermal spread. Again, after after the, the after the tests we done on a super cruise overcharged ships, I can understand why. The 5A frame shaft drive was maintained, no, no uh, surprise there, and it was engineered with increased range, which the SCO drive actually goes slightly further engineered than the uh, stock Sirius ones. But instead of putting um, what we normally do with these ships, he put thermal spread on it. I'm beginning to see a trend, Andy. There's a trend here. Uh, yeah. There's a trend, so. Um, the 3D <laughs> life support remained. I'm guessing that's for weight or mass, sorry, and it was fitted with light, lightweight grade 5. And then we're down to power distributors. So he changed the 5s, he changed the. Sorry. Yeah, power distributors. He changed the. 6A that it came with for a 5D and his engine focused it and he stripped it down 
So I'm assuming the engine focused it for obviously the engine builds what you're focusing on here. Yeah. And uh, you stripped only... it down because you couldn't put any cooling on it. On that ship you only have two items to, to pip for. Sis right. and engine. So you don't need a completely over the top um fill it to the fill it to the nine sort of a distributor. You need one that'll just barely do the minimum that you want. Yeah, okay. And then because it does what it does, I went with engine focused. And then stripped it for uh weight, for jump range weight. So so the, the reason it's engine focused I think will become clear when we look at the um we look at the um the optional extras and the you know the utility stuff. Um but yeah, I would I would have it I would have done that for an exploration ship, kinda anyway. So it's no, it's no out of the norm for exploration. Um, when we got to sensors, the five D sensors were already on the ship. They were remained, and they were light weighted, again for mass control. And then the four the four C fuel tank, obviously came with the ship, and it couldn't be replaced. So, and it's sixteen tons of fuel, right? So fuel is something we're probably going to speak about a little bit because uh you know it's kinda of, it's kinda of crucial when it comes to the super cruise uh, the super cruise uh, overcharge so So we've done the core uh, sorry we've done the core and we've done the hard points we're now on to the utility mounts right So basically the utility mounts were stripped out and two Heat sink launchers were added, and both of them were fitted with a ammo capacity upgrade. Um, now, one of the re one of the only thing it could probably have been a better fit for that would have been the Sirius variety that I've got slightly more. But unfortunately, oh well, no, unfortunately, can't. Andy and myself are in Colonia on the main character, so. That was the best option for out there, so. So he stripped out the guns and he stripped out the utilities and fitted a uh, two heat sink launchers. And that was that was the kind of the pre-build logic because uh what we'd seen for the frame shift um uh, school modified overdrives where basic heat control was pretty key, so <clears throat> okay, so we're now on to the optionals, and um, and this is interesting. The optional extras when we first seen the ship, we were kind of ooh because they've no got a great deal of optional extras. We we thought there might have been more. Um, compared to the Python, I don't think the choice was. Oh, is it? I don't know. I know that you were concerned about the availability of certain modules. And we did a little bit of testing um, over the piece. And we ended up changing it this way. So the, the bi-weave shields, the 6C bi-weave shields, which is clearly a combat build, that was taken out and replaced with a 6C fuel tank, which immediately gave the ship 80 tonnes of fuel. Which is a hell of a lot of fuel. Um, you basically got a big hydrogen bottle there, mate. That's <laughs> big hydrogen bottle. Uh, okay, the next thing was the 4D hull reinforcement package was changed for a 4C by weave shields. And that was engineered with low power and thermal block. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, thermal block. Yes, that's right. Ah, <coughs> uh, okay. So we're down to the three. So that's the six slot used, the four slot used. We're down to the three slot, and that was fitted with a three A fuel scoop. Um, and I know that you, I know you tested all sorts of different a. Uh, 
combinations of this, and that was that was basically shielded. That was shielded. So you've engineered that. That was shielded. Um, number two has removed the hull reinforcement package and fitted the planetary vehicle hangar. Uh, you've got a a six ton one. Uh, does that come with one hangar slot or two? I can't remember. You've got a two G. Sorry, is that? One a one B, right, okay. A one B, single. The one B. The interesting thing as well was um we did run about that time we went and bought a a scorpion. And that, that seems to on the ground the scorpion seems to handle a hell of a lot better than the old SRV um when it comes to driving it, so Right, the next one is three this there's three one slots. Um and you basically took all of them out, and you've now got a detailed surface scanner and an advanced docking computer. And, a, and the restricted one you don't use, so it's probably cause. Oh, it'll be the it'll be the same. It'll be the advanced planetary approach. You kind of change it, so approach, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um. The surface scanner, what, you, what you, did you go for? Expanded probe scanning radius. Okay, quicker scans. I get it. I get it. So that build was built, and we tested it. Now, the first time it was tested was during, before the patch, when everybody was running at 30 frames per second, because there was less heat generated. And it performed pretty well. But I seem to remember you having to use, was it two heat sinks for one of the runs? But you were yeah. going an incredibly long distance. I mean, we're not yeah, talking uh, hot, hot in orbital here, but you were going yeah. quite far. But we tinkered with it. If I can remember correctly, you tinkered with it. And then the patch happened, and you noticed a change. Because as soon as you went back on the ship, all of a sudden, your heat generation would never get above 68% or something. Something like that, yeah. So this is going full bore with a frame shift score drive. So essentially the need for heat sinks was kind of gone. At least for a point of view of the frame shift drive burning you up. And I think it's fair to say that none of us expected that. None of us expected that. Um, it flew really good compared to some of the other ships that I had tested. It seemed to be a relatively straight flight path. Yeah. Um, when you look at the thing, you can understand why. How streamlined is it? It's nice. Mm. It does uh, far less jitter with the Python. Yeah. So I've tested at umpteen ships, as, as you know, in the school drive. I've tested the Anaconda, which was like a bucking bonker, you know, and the buckaroo. I was, I've, tried, I've tested the Asp Explorer, the Diamondback Explorer. They were pretty okay. Um, the best one I've found for kind of inter-system flight for CGs and ground stuff is the Vulture. The Vulture's great. It's... Mm. You know, it's really difficult control, control, controlling the speed of that, so... But none of them, none of them performed like this thing when it came to using the score drive. So, we're really interested in come the, the 7th of August, just how the Type 8 performs, if it's going to be as similar, maybe even more stable ship, so... No, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, Andy, but you might. The, this ship, when it when it was uh, tested, the final test run, how far did it go again? The um, well, I was experimenting with different uh, cargo tanks, sorry, fuel tanks, and I was getting way more than five hundred thousand. Yeah. So yeah, that was. Um, that was a thing. Um, but the final finished build that I've got there does 1.5 million light seconds. So so this is... <laughs> this, and is that draining the fuel? Yes. Yeah. 
It so, leaves me enough fuel to jump out of the system if I need to. Yeah, yeah, to jump. So, if the, so if the, at, at, the, at that distance, if there's no a fuel, a scoopable star, you're still pretty mm. safe to jump to a new star. And now, bearing in mind we're in we're in Colonia, so the stars are kind of a wee bit closer together, but still one. So one point five million light seconds. Light seconds. Yeah. So it's not going to be able. It's not going to be able to get you to um, somewhere like a uh, hot orbital or something like that, unless you specifically say, "I'm going shieldless and putting more fuel on it and stuff like that." So, yeah. But yeah, that's an, that's an incredible Probably range. Maybe. So, and one of the reasons we did this was, um, and it's really funny why we ended up in Colonia. We were exploring over. Uh, Anchorage, Explorers Anchorage over Sagittarius A. We'd went and took a run up in Andy's carrier to visit some black holes up at the top of the galaxy. And then Frontier announced um, the Achilles um, engineers had been playing with frameshift drives and it kind of perked my curiosity and I started messing about with it on Cosmic Drifter. And when they released the 5A modules... I think it was two days later we beelined it to Colonia for where we were because we had to test these things out in the black. And it's pretty much, uh, for us, it's pretty much, it's got to be on an exploration ship, this SCO drive. It's just so good for getting off a planet's surface. Although there is the odd occasion you get mass locked, which is pretty weird. Um, I think, looking into that, Dale, I think it's atmospheric planets. Um, the atmosphere stopped me and jumping. That's interesting. Okay. And the uh, non-atmospheric ones, uh, uh, you can escape immediately. Okay. That was from my little bit of research. So yeah, so I was I was gobsmacked when I seen the range because I think the best I had been able to do, um, and I took I took score drives out to. Um, the deep, the deep space probes and so just for uh, shits and giggles, really. Um, and they were struggling to get there. They could make it, but it was uh, my first runs. I wasn't quite sure of the capabilities of the score drive. So, but this thing is definitely what you would call a deep space explorer par excellence. Because not only have you got the light years jump range, um, going from star to star, you can. You can go so deep into a system. I don't think other than, I mean, 1.6 million light seconds. I don't think I've seen any stars other than Hutton's, other than Proxima Centauri, at a distance which this ship couldn't cope with. So for mm. exploring, it's just so fast at getting to distant planets where there might be some exos and stuff like that. So yeah. We don't tend to look at um, exobiology targets that are 300,000 light seconds or more as being out of our range of uh, going on the ground and exploring now. Whereas before, we'd have been an appreciable time in space getting to them before we even had set foot on the ground. So so for an explorer, that one aspect of the SCO drive is just absolutely brilliant. So... Um, so obviously the next expansion's coming. The next expansion, that's not what I'm wanting to see. The next patch is coming on um, the 7th. And that's just, it's officially called the Type 8 expansion. <laughs> They're doing away with numbers and actually giving them words that kind of mean stuff to people. That's kind of cool for an information pass on. So, And next time that comes up, there'll be... What we're going to do with it with the type eight um we're not going to say here <laughs> but bearing in mind this is a a combat ship that's been made by frontier which andy's turned into an explorer let's just say our, our thoughts on what to do with a type eight are probably different from what what frontier envisaged or maybe no i don't know Hello there, I see you in front of me. <laughs> so 
let's take a little wander around this thing. Absolutely. Quite well lit, this hangar. You can see. Oh, look at the. Cause it's cool because you can see the whole lot. It's just a shame we can't jump in here. So the, under, the underside of the ship's completely un. I can't see that from the buy screen, right? So you don't see any of these features. Um, that's a greeble that I'm looking at. Oh, well, there's quite a lot of greebles in this, so. Well, it, uh, by that I mean ship kits. Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing here is a piece of a ship kit. The wings at the end are also. Yeah, that's part ship. of the the red buy you did, wasn't it? That's red buy, so. Mm. So there's a lot of details on this underside that you don't see. So the, this no, is quite an interesting bit here. These things, what the hell? What you know? What are these lasers or, Where or are the you? lights? What the hell are these things all about? All oh, right. Um, see them? Yeah. Oh, sorry, these are, are they my flying lights. I think they are. Yeah, I think they are the other lights. So. Yeah. This is a greeble. Yeah. Such cool looking. I mean, th these here have got scramjet written all over them. These bats, and I, I, I'm yeah, not saying, yeah, these you know what I mean. These are not on the standard one. Oh, these are part of the ship kit. Okay, yeah, ship kit. Yeah. yeah. Very um, cool. Very cool. The big. I've got a wrap over. You get the wrap yeah. over. Oh yeah, there's two wings here at the front, which are yeah. also part of the ship kit. Yeah. And you've got um, the main ones big here. Wrap over, a big wrap over wing at the back. Yeah. The, literally the whole width of the. Yeah, I can see. So, the so the details ship. of the ship, I can see for the. I can see I the land details. It on a lit planet, if you want to get. And a we'll near. get a look at it, yeah, because we can jump about it then. So, but I'll All go right. in and get in my seat. So. All right, you are. Board. Okay, so we've got a split screen, guys. I'm going to go outside. Indeed. I'm sat. I'm sat out the back of your ship now. Right so you now. can um, you can go and you can I go can and uh, you, you can go out. Yeah. You can take off and do the do the usual stuff, and I'll try and follow you in the camera. So the split view is going to let us uh, see what's going on. Unfortunately, um, I'm going to. I'm going to get broke. <laughs> I'm trying to minimise my camera movement as much as I can. Right, it's taking me out. That's annoying, so that is. Oh, we're doing the silver pose. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Should be on, yeah, it should be uh, good I'm back, I'm back out again now, I. Yeah, I'm that's not nice sorry. Too quick, if you want to... No, no, that's fine, yeah. that's fine, that's fine. Um, right, so here's what I need, right? We need to... So we're going to see what you're flying on the screen. So everything you do will be replayed on the screen, and hopefully it will be big enough. A little day is right. um, when I've finished the what we're doing here, right? I'll send you through one frame of the video, just so you can okay. see what I'm talking about. So I need you to just—it's up to you what you do. You tell me what you're going to do, and I would like a distance check. So I'd just like you to burn your drive, and we'll start to see when you get your fuel warnings. Oh God, it's only two thousand. That's really not there's nothing here for us so if we need to jump somewhere else to go and find something uh -huh. we can but let's just get uh -huh. let's just get the range of the thing let's go out at the range yet on super cruise overcharge taking it to the fuel warnings i can't okay. remember what we get a 25 percent warning we get a uh what did we get we get a i think there's a 10 percent and a five percent yeah I'll probably stop at. No, okay, I'll real stop nice where I that know. gas giant. Really cool. Hi. Hi there, all right. I I'm just heading apart. for the sun as my starting point. The, the sun's good because you can scoop there, can't you? I can. 
and yeah. uh, that will be our absolute starting point. Yeah. And then you can fly by whatever you want to fly by, and we'll just see how there's far. There's nothing in this system. There is a system close by with a, another star 500,000 away. Yeah. We can uh, do a bit of messing with that system. Yeah. It's got stations down there and everything, so. This is really helpful for me doing the camera work, by the way, because I can see. I actually can see what you're looking at on a full screen. Hmm. It's very cool, actually. You see how my needle on my screen is stuck, my speed needle is stuck in the middle of blue? Yes. That's my throttle indents, or yes. detents they're called, and I, I have it hard up against it, uh, and that locks me at that perfect 50% mark. Oh, of course, because you've, you've got the HOTAS and the buttons, and you've, yeah, got the, you've got the proper it. flight sticks. So. Yeah. Do you know that's actually, that. that's actually telling you that I'm out in the camera, that HUD display, see it? Mm. Look, it shows me showing in your screen as a little kind of funny line. Yeah. In yeah. A circle, yeah. I just wonder if that dot's actually telling you where you are in relation to your ship. That would be Not cool. Sure. See, I can see the... So because I can see your screen, Andy, I can roughly guess what I'm waiting to look for. So this should be mm. better quality than what we did before. Well, of course, yeah. He says, so I'll have a very quick scoop when I get here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll catch um, the, I'll catch the departure. This is, the, this, um, is, this is cool. I'll keep the sun selected, so on my screen, you'll get the light settings we are away as well. The light settings we've travelled. Yeah. I'll just do a quick scoop and then get the light settings. And So I'm going to keep my camera pointing to... The star, right? Yeah, indeed. With your ship, and then as soon as the star starts to go... Um, what I'm going to do is go uh, 180 degrees around it, so if you want to use your camera to follow the star the whole way around... Yeah, so I'll just, I'm just going to keep you... It, and I'm going to come out on the other side. Yeah. I'm just going to keep you as best I can. I'm just trying to remember where... It, my wee footage is doing there, so I'm just trying not to block, block your ship. It's not easy to do. What does this do? As I say, we'll get it as best we can. Mm. Oh, this is looking cool. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> I will await. You have some time to swing around to the sun because I'm going to wait for the temperature to drop down. No, that's, that's all right. It's, I can see, I can see everything clearly. It might be a bit small in my video, although I don't know. But we'll see when, because um, I'm not watching it full screen in OBS. I set um, Discord to record uh, with an emphasis on text. No, it's readable. It's very readable what I'm yeah, seeing here. Yeah. Well, I didn't use the uh, visual quality one. I used the Better option for text. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> right. Wicked. it. That's alright, get Actually, back here again. Yeah, no, no, this is gonna be the run out. Wait, right. that's cool. Right, so, as soon as the FSD's cooled down, this is the run out because I was full anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh let's just increase <laughs> the speed of it. And it will help me to cool down a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What today is just get out and I'll get the camera in view, right? Yeah. Ah. Oh. A minute or so yet because uh, I'm still waiting on FSD cooldown and. Uh, yeah, I can't go out the camera, but it will just note me back inside the ship, so. So uh, oh, I can change my there screen to show. You see, you can see the same map as you. I'm going to put that extra pit in systems. Does that help any? I don't know. No. Uh, <laughs> they point me in weapons because there's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> System, yeah. Let's uh, turn the fuel scoop off. Always a good trick for this. When you've had a little bit of a crash into a sun. Yeah. Right. 
Uh, I'm a bit warm, so I'll do a mini uh, cruise first. For yeah, about, I need to get the camera in position, so don't yeah, worry. Five, five or six, uh, five or six light seconds away from the sun. Oh. Very warm, but I didn't overheat. No, you're good, right? I've got you going, right, I've got you going away for you at a rapid rate of knots. So. This is only normal. Ah, I know. Right. Um, the, sun, okay. the sun is quite small, so you might want to turn around and go back to it and then go. I certainly can. I can get it so it's bigger in frame. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I can. Oh, I like that, Andy. That's really good. Do you fly by the sun, mate? That would be fine. I will. This time I won't crash into it. <laughs> I believe you. And I won't get too close this time because I'm trying to keep heat at 27% um, yeah, nice. where I am right now. It's really cool looking at this from both the, both the screen. Oh, no. Apologies. That's, I'm using a quicker turn rate by That's using fine. roll. Yeah. Now, this will be the angle we'll be approaching and disappearing at, so... That's fine, I'm just coming in. I just wasn't sure where the sun uh, right. Okay, I've to... got you, I've got you, I've got you. That's a nice shot. Well, actually. When you get by it, you'll need to swing your camera around. All that no, I'm good, I'm behind you, let's go. I'm happy. Okay. Right. I'll just get the far side of this now. And because I'm on 27% the whole time, I can literally leave now. It's gone off as you can the stars just gone man, that's gone. Right, it's the alarm bubble. Oh, your stars disappeared man. I have wow. absolutely no control here. Well, I have control but I'm not steering. Yeah. And yeah, that's okay, we just want to see how far it goes. 66 degrees your temperature, it's just no heat. Mm. It's nuts. I think the little jumps in my screen are just lag, actually, for the game. Very possible. I think it's really just a little bit of lag, picking up where you are and I'm are in the same instance. Because your flight's as smooth as hell, so... Might be my hardware that's a skiing that this problem. Right, we're rapidly approaching 250,000. <laughs> look at the look at the fuel you've got left. Yeah, I know. So the distance from the sun is two hundred and fifty. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. The amount of the fuel I've used, which is about what? Fifteen, maybe twenty. Yeah, what what I'm going to do is see when, see when you get your twenty five percent warning. Yeah. That's a good. It's a good uh, range. Indicator for adding to the stats of the ship. Mm. My fuel use at the moment is 783, whatever that is, an hour. Where do you see that? Above the fuel dropping down. Oh, that'll be tons. No, can it be? <laughs> can it be tons? This isn't going to be. Um, this isn't going to be a one-hour flight, I can tell you. No, but what I mean is your your fuel use. Yeah, could you, be tons. Yes. Yeah. Your, what's the speed? Four point what? Distance five hundred thousand. Your maximum eight. speed, I don't know. It's but four four oh seven six four oh eight eighty something four oh seventy three yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. 0092 there. Wow. Yeah. But I don't so, know if your speed goes up the lighter you get. Uh, it might. We'll, we'll find out soon enough because I'm actually burning tons of fuel here. Yeah, you're just, it's, you see it on the top. You, you see that on your top fuel tank. I see that, yeah. That's the. Um, That's a really good number. 700 and what? 700, is it 83 or 63.2 80, something? 83.2 per five. hour. 700. Mm. And now 
approaching 750,000 light seconds. Pair over. About 50% fuel used. <coughs> You've got 80 ton, yeah. yeah. You've got 80 ton fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. So I did 750,000 on 40 ton. God. This is a good build, isn't it? Uh, honestly, this is why I want to share it with the world, dude, because it's... <coughs> it's just a shame about that, eh? About that stuff. I'm going to take the camera a wee spin around the ship, right? Indeed. The screen is no active because it's a... Uh, it's definitely struggling a bit with a... Ah. We're at about 33% fuel now, and we're rapidly approaching uh, a million kilolight seconds. Yeah. Journey time has been approximately three minutes, I think. I can time all this. You can, of course. You'll, you'll have it in the video. I'll steps. have it in the video. I can time all this. I'm going to just, I'm sat, actually sat at the side of the ship, right? 25, when, when you get the 25% warning, right? I just got it there, 1045. I've never seen that, right? Yeah. Oh, I see it, yeah, I see it, right. Do so I think you can get to 10% and then you need to start thinking about stopping, huh? No, 5% is more than enough for me to jump to another system. Oh, okay, we'll go to 5 then. Yeah. Then I've got 25, 10 and probably 5, so... <sighs> 1.2 million. <laughs> get the 10% warning soon. Will I stop yeah. at 5? Yeah, five school. Okay, well do. That's ten percent. That's the ten. Yeah, I got that. I got one point two fifty. Yeah, that's one point two fifty. Outstanding range. Outstanding range, man. Absolutely outstanding range. Okay, I stopped there at one three five seven. You've got 5% and we're 1.1. One. We're still doing 1,000 light seconds, even though yeah. it's stopped. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at my fuel, my fuel meter looks a little barren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of 80 tonne of fuel, but you've still got a bit left. Yeah. Right, so see if you could turn around to the ship. You turn around yeah. to the star, so I can see the... Okay, I can do that. If you it can turn... looks as small as everything we can see in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you've still got it targeted, didn't you? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to tell us. Yeah. There you go. One point what? Three, six, seven, one, six, four. <laughs> that's nuts. And that was at 5% fuel. <clears throat> so that's over a million. The furthest, the furthest I think we've seen planetary system out with Alpha Centauri is probably maybe 600. 700,000 yes. light seconds. Yeah, You're so double that seen... distance. Almost. Yeah, I'm double that. So I can go there. So you could I literally go, go there and go back, so. Yeah, which means it doesn't have to be a scoopable star. Yeah. So that's what this build gives you. It gives you the opportunity to go 700,000 light seconds to a non scoopable star. Yeah, and, and do explore all that. Your stuff, Yeah, explore and then go back and scoop from the main star when you get there. So, are they, I'm trying to think of a system we can go to, maybe Carcosa, maybe? Carcosa has got the 500,000. I will check for you very shortly. Yes, let's go there. Um, what so the I've hell is the... What, what are the unexplored things, Andy, in this system? Go back a minute, will you? Oh, well, I saw them there, yeah. Oh, they're, they're probably part of, either part of the main system. You've just no honked them. They I'm sorry. Right. They are. I just haven't been there. Yeah, you've no honked them. 
Let's have a look what it is exactly, so I'll highlight it. Then I'll go to system map and we'll see what's highlighted in the system map. Yeah. Uh, it's this planet, yeah. Oh, it's the big, the big planet. It's not that far away, though. No. No. Okay. Wow. So I'm going to make a... Uh, <coughs> Let's go get some fuel, eye. Yeah, I'll... Now, El Pru... I can't tell from here what type of star that is. Okay, I'll lock it. I'll start to charge, and it will tell me what sort of star that is. Yeah, okay. And if it's not scoopable, I will choose somewhere else. Oh yeah, we're good. K-Class, all I need to do is just scoop a few tons and then we can make it back to a base or whatever. Oh it's picked up all the oh so on my screen it's got the alert one and she got the fuel I've just all popped in. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I got a believe it or not, I've got another jump after this as well. Yeah it's such good it's just a good build. Well, Eight a ton of fuel. Jesus. Yeah, the five percent warning actually does a lot more fuel there than you would imagine. It's probably as much. Wow. I've got probably as much fuel as. Um, hang on, let's pull to a stop. Yeah, you see I the lag between too. our jump ins there, by the way. That's funny. All right. So um, it's not a great scooper this ship. I will say that it, it oh, certainly right. exceeds sixty percent. Super scooper. Oh, it's that's not brilliant. the best. Okay, so I've got enough fuel to jump to Corcosa. Yeah. I'll dock, refill. Yeah. And then I think that's the system that has the 500,000 light year. Um, the 500,000 light year doodad. Corcosa. I think you might be right. It's ringing a bell. Isn't there a long one in Lucatine as well? Might be, eh? Watch time. There is, but it's only 9,000, 10,000 away. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh... Oh, God, there looks some nice underside images here. No, it's not that one either. Um, Pico. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, It just looks it just looks a good ship, really. And the thing is the the, the, the modeling on the T eight looks more this looks more like a kind of sleek, polished Fighter military time. ship, right? It's got a bunch yeah. of military engineers pouring over it and scrubbing it with oil every five seconds and Oh there, look. We're going to Pariah B. Okay. Uh, that star is 489,000 away. Right, that's fine. That's fine. And it's a class M, so it can be scooped. No, we've done it. Okay, I think I've more than enough fuel for this. Yeah. But I will have to dock. Fine. And fill up. Because it's a wee, it, out in the black. If you do this, then you, you, you realise you're going to have to sit there for half an hour and, and uh, fuel scoop. Yeah, yeah no, it's see. a limitation. It's a limitation of the internals. But if you're out here and you do something like that, automatically dock. Yeah, you got the option. Take off and go. Yeah. Actually, I want to see what this system is like. I've never been here. All right. But I better do a badoom. <laughs> no, that's all there is. Yeah. How many jumps do I have here? Two, okay. Wait, I'm back inside the ship because uh, it's easier for me to sit and watch the stuff. We'll actually see the lag between. The, the, you, me getting into your system. So there's no any 
it jumps me out first, it's weird. But that'll be just the, the delay in me picking up your stream. But the way, the other way, you come out first and I'm sitting there looking at the screen waiting. Everybody goes a surfing on the neutron star. Oh, that was nice. You done that well. Man, that surfed the neutron star's quick, did it? I got its wee boost really fast. Oh, see, see the difference between my screen and your screen, right? I can't yeah. see that you've targeted that star. I know that that's the way they're going because you've stopped moving, but it's really annoying. That I don't get that. This is where you're. I should have like a big, a big cross somewhere on the screen saying this is what he's aiming at. Hmm. Well, obviously it's the bit in the middle of the screen, but you know what I mean. I do. Yeah, there's a wee delay between, between yeah. us. Obviously, yeah. That's where we're headed. Right. But before that, I'd better select a station. That'll do. Oh, now we've got a platform there. Go for that. In fact, I'm going to show you something. How this super cruise assist works. No. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Um. Not that one. Is there a platform here? Let's have a look at the system map. No. No. No, landing no. on a planet's not a problem. Hmm. I hope. It has to be a planet here. Yeah. yeah. We'll find out. Um, we're testing. Well, this. we're testing. We're testing the instance and so. Indeed. And so far it's been robust. You know, right up to now, planets have been a problem before, though, so. That's true, yeah. Do you want me to try a different system? Where I no, this will do, just, just try it. If, it, if I'll just, I'll just um, come to you or whatever. Indeed. Really cool because I can actually see. But I can see what you're doing on the screen, it makes things so much easier. I guess it would, yeah. As long as I've got the control, that means when you move the ship, it just doesn't move my camera as well. Right, Tends yeah. to work. I'm doing a nice wee pirouette around your ship. Indeed. There's the sun just popping in. It's cool because I can see you positioning probably fine. There's the planet now coming onto my screen. Aye, that, that spoil, that is like a spoiler in the back fin of the ship's cool. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lots of lots of little additions. If you yeah, just nice wee, side nice wee side. Yeah. modifications. Hmm. So we've done fuel check, this distance range, and we're going to do a journey to a planet at such and such a distance. 
yeah. what we would call an average world, an average distant exploration world. Well, so we could give it like a estimated um, exploration range. How about that? That sounds like that sounds an explorer term, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, this star doesn't have any planets around it, unfortunately. Did you want to go with one with planets? Because I can arrange it. No, let's just get down here and get fuel and go that distance. Um, okay. Like I say, it's <coughs> it's more a range finder thing. Okay. See, that was mere in sync with each other. That's weird. The frame shift jump, there's lag, but that there was pretty. That was pretty good. I can get a nice shot of your landing here if I oh if I can do this quick enough. I'm never sure of the range of this by the way. Well we've come out of Super Cruise and as far as I can tell I'm, I'm still, still here. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. I've got you on now. You're docking now. at landing pad six. Inside that brought me inside. That's weird what's happening here. That's really bizarre. It doesn't make any sense as to why we have to leave. No. Facing the other way, it makes no sense. Oh, come on, Tom. Tom, 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 Tom. Good, good. I'm too slow. I'm too slow, Tom. Leave at minimum speed, so if you want to, um... yeah, line up and let's go. I'll get out. We'll be alright now because we're right. here. It's just the initial Thank jump, to... It's just the initial it. jump that's the problem. Planet, I think. I don't think there's a was there a planet? Yeah, or the star? yeah, it's the other side of the planet. So. Oh, that's God's I water. don't want to use Super Cruise Boost because we want to save that for. Oh no, I can here. Yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah, you're all right. You can go roll it out like the clappers here. Yeah, well, it'll use nothing. No, yeah, it you need to target that planet, though. Remember. Um, where's that star again? The B. Yeah. Now I'm going to do. Why have I not got? Oh, I, that's why. On this ship, um, I've got. Um, also dock, not um, super. Oh, you got assist. it turned off? Mm, no, I can't fit the two at once. Mm. Okay, are you camera wires that you set up? I'm you good, are you? Fire, fire away. Uh, I'm at 27%, so here we go. Hands are off uh, the throttling stick now. Ah. I'm just sat behind the ship, just waiting, see, waiting for us to loom in. You can see from my window, it just circles around the... Um... Yeah. I've got a wee bit of judder in my capture, but that's lag, my mm. end. Um, I, don't know how, I don't know how I could smooth that out, maybe latency or something, but... Um, what I'm looking for is... So, obviously I'm sat behind your wing, right? Hmm. Uh, actually, I'll go the other side, because... The wee chat windies there, let's go out here. I'm just trying to gauge where yeah, where the it's hard to, to to guess where the it's a star so it should get bigger. <laughs> oh it will. Yeah. We're halfway there now. Yeah. Yeah, but believe it or not, it's easy it's easy to miss these. <laughs> Even stars it's easy to miss. Because you I go know. whizzing by it at such a speed. I you're know. at 4,000 times the speed of light here. Yeah, I'm going to You're probably literally going like a bat out of hell. 4,000 4, is where I'm going to pull the... Pull the plug? Pull the plug. 
Okay. Let's see how close we get with that. What? What I need to do, Andy? See, once I've got it recorded, mm -hmm. and because because obviously watching it, I'll see where it comes in. I'm just hoping I've got the camera in a decent place based on your screen. I think mm. I have. Oh, I see it coming in now. There it is. Oh, well, that was a planet we went by. Even at 4,000. That was the star we went by. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. We're only 590 light... No, 570 light seconds away. Yeah. But, yeah, that's not bad. I call that a win for, <laughs> yeah, well, for that yeah. distance, no. Yeah. And we're about to come up to um, a class M star. Which yeah, that's, is typical, that's yeah, typical when you're out in the black and you've got something this far away. Most often is a class M, so you'll be flitting around the planets and then you can scoop and do whatever you need to do then. Yeah. So, as you can see, I've used about 25% of fuel. So that was about 400... 400k so that so yeah that's well within exploration range once you get here if there's any planets sure is which there isn't in this case but that's a shame yeah so 440,000 this was that's good uh, time a little over a minute by my estimation you can tell exactly from the I'll check when I replay this yeah but the um the difference between that and not having the scow drive is a huge. Uh, it's probably twenty minutes, isn't it? Yeah. To get this out, at least twenty minutes, if not more. It can, it's misleading when you do a run. Because obviously you get up to really high speeds of lights when you're out in the middle. Mm. But you're never getting to that level of speed. Oh god, no. Don't watch you don't bump out of here. No, I'm fine. I've got a right wide distance this time. Yeah. As you can see from my um, screen. Yeah, I've got square eyes here looking at two screens. <laughs> I'm at my maximum uh, fuel scooping speed, which is 175. To let off a, a heat sink now. Yeah, you just need to use heat sinks for scooping this the star. That's hilarious. It is. It's not the greatest um, scooper going. But in all other respects, it's absolutely spot on. Oh, I think it's a good build. I'm well, well, well impressed with that build. Look at that star. I'm getting some. This is going to throw a wobble. Oh, there's a big. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, two of them. Two of them. What a shot, man. Oh, did you get the other star as well? Oh, you could see. No, no, I've got the. Oh, wait, you see this when you're coming round. I'm coming back round your ship. Right, I'm just behind your ship now. I think. That was nice. Star's behind us. Oh, you're turning. I was heading back to the A star. Yeah, go just for it. To, Let's do just it. To, uh, Let's do it again. Out. See if we see if we can get the out coming out any better. <laughs> okay. Cool. A couple of degrees yet. I'm trying to sit behind your ship, Andy. Right? I'm trying to. Mm. I'm trying to predict where the stars come and fin. It's really hard. So I'm right behind your wings. I'm pointing like an old fa it. Remember, like the old-fashioned first kind of computer games, mm. where you sat in the joystick and chair in the in the arcade and you blew the F16 or 15 or whatever the hell, or F5 or whatever the hell it was it then. Yeah. Oh, pardon okay. me. That was a bop. Engaging. I'm ready whenever yeah. you're ready. It's engaging now. Oh.
Yeah, I'm sorry about the wee judder on my my side, but that that's that's lag. You might have a better chance recording this if you're um, on a local area network, I think. For sure, I would imagine. The thing about this ship is it doesn't actually do a flip on you, right? Because mm. some of the other ones will turn and go way off course. Yeah. This one's not done that yeah, yet. I, I'm actually... I'm steering here to keep her on the surf. Oh, no, okay, that's fine. I'm doing the same thing myself, so... But still, it's, look at that temperature. So... You never needed to use a heat sink once doing this. So good. The only time I did was when I was scooping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Press on 5,000, it will come out 500 this side of the sun. That's yeah. the plan. I can see this, I, I can see it coming or two, or it's you can start to. I can see it coming, I can see it. Right. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so good! <laughs> it's so That's good. 5, I'm actually further away. How can you? How can that be? It's the, it, it, it's the. It's hard to do, yeah. Hard to do. I think I'm just getting a bit too close. Oh, I think they bought me a shirt there again. There we go. Sorry. That was cool. Yeah, only seven foot, seven hundred and forty light seconds away. My God, considering you were four hundred thousand away, that's a win. Coming in a nice wee, a nice wee drop. I don't think that even took a minute. But I, I bow to your wisdom there when the time comes. I'll get, I'll get this things up and I'll get the clock running. Um, I can't remember. Is it Pergamont or one of those systems has it definitely has stuff a long way away. Um, ah, uh, lost maybe. I don't remember. I shall have a look for you. Yeah, it could well be lost. So looking at the Coriolis link you sent me for this ship build, it's quite interesting, the test runs we did. Obviously the response and distance uh, range you're getting for the ship, the complete lack of overheating when it's running under screw drive, either with the thrust engaged or not engaged, came as a bit of a surprise to us after that fact. 930. This going around at so I made three graphs, as you know, mm -hmm. because I never noticed anything on the Coriolis graphs or Odyssey material tracker. There's a nice little bit in there for, for ship stuff as well. Mm. But I never actually noticed anything for things that's important for go operations, so let's, let's talk about them. The first one I did was I did a fuel use chart. It was after the runs we did, I was having a look at your fuel usage on screen. Mm -hmm. After a little bit of head scratching. I didn't quite believe it was 783 tonnes per hour. When I looked at it, I went, that can't be right. But based on the distance you went and the actual time, the 25, 10 and 5% warning comes in, I think it's actually pretty accurate. And the staggering thing is, you know you've got 80 tonne of fuel there, right? According mm. to the graph that I've made up there, if you were burning all that fuel to destruction, you'd have maybe about six minutes at school time to go. So you'd get a long way, but you'd blow up at the end of it. So it seems kind of, <laughs> kind of pointless. So, mm. so the effective range, though, it, you know, it's a hell of a you've got a, a hell of an operating window for exploring because of the, that there, and and obviously mm. that's using um, your thrust at a minimum. Yeah. Um, because it keeps the fuel usage down, so. I've put the 5B score response curve, just for comparison, really, because you've got a longer time running, but you don't get anywhere near the, the speed you do with this one. 
So that was the one fuel graph there. Yeah. And that was th that graph's based entirely on what we've seen in the game for your ship. So. Dude. The next graph I did was velocity characteristic. Defining these points in time is really determined on what your max velocity is, underscore, how much fuel reserves you've got, underscore. And I wasn't too sure actually the, the, the proper response. It was really difficult to look at what was going on with the, with the ship speeds. So I kind of made it up just so it looks like a proper graph. For anybody that's interested, so I stole from my old engineering notebooks and how capacitors work. And I thought, well, capacitors charge up, and this is called an overcharge, so it kind of fits, do you know what I mean? But you get to your max velocity pretty quick. And then your deactivation time is entirely based on either where you're going or how much fuel you want to burn, really. Mm. And that's going to vary with what's in the tank. And then the decay, the decay is kind of like that when I was watching it in the game, it just slowly creeps down to, to kind of level out and flatten out at the bottom, so. But the thing about this build is the max speed is a whopping great, I mean it's over 4,000 times the speed of light, so getting you there pretty quick and it's no destroying your fuel reserves once you get to somewhere that's a fair way out to let you explore, so it's ideal for what we want to do. And then the only other, the only other thing worth, worth talking about is um, is the, the, the thermal properties of the ship. It's, um, it's actually kind of second to none. <coughs> so I made up a wee thermal graph. I wasn't really too sure how to draw this, so... So it's got like three temperature ranges. One of them is standard super cruise, which I think was around about the I don't know twenty two, twenty six percent mark, around about there. I can't quite remember. I think maximum. Um, when I you're think. on super cruise, just flying as normal, it was quite. Mm. It wasn't. A, it wasn't just under twenty, but it was cool enough to be no worried about it. But where this one really surprised us, and this was after the patch, when you minimum thrust score active, you're up to 60, between 66 and 68 degrees C. We're, we're using a, we're using a heat sink. I didn't expect that. I don't know if you did. I certainly didn't expect that. No, and I fitted two um, large heat sinks on, on the ship because I knew I was going to get trouble. But yeah. yeah. And then mm. talking to you over the course of making that, you know, this, this video, what I wasn't aware of is that the same thing happened when you put the max thrust up. You increase your speed for, uh, I don't know, 4,000 to over 5,000 um, times the speed of light. Your in temperature goes up to about, I think you said 88 degrees C. But you still, yeah, need, you still don't need to use any heat sinks even with max thrust. And that's nuts. Mm. That's just, so you've got incredible, incredible thermal properties in that build. And mm. I've never seen any other ship to do that. It will be really interesting to see how the Type 8 stands up. Because the one thing that all this kind of science kind of observation stuff has told us is that at the moment there's not a, there's not a ship in the game that will ever have enough fuel to do a single burn run to hot an orbital. Indeed. We simply don't have enough uh, speed or fuel or time <laughs> at the moment mm. um, so when the th so when the th the the type 8 comes out that will be interesting because these ships should have a similar property and they're right they're really kind of they're kind of stable flying under school more so than other ships are And I think, as builds go, this is one of your best. Um, so yeah, well done, mate. It's a good one. Indeed.